Today we are talking all things A2 Volkswagen ABS. Maybe not the most exciting topic, but very important because these things are very overly complicated, equally finicky, and it's what's keeping this Corrado off the road. If you're new here, this is my 1992 Corrado SLC project. It's been sitting for over eight years. We got it running and last video took it on its first drive. Super exciting moment, but we got about half a mile down the road and the right front brake started rolling smoke. Literally felt like the e-brake was in full lock, like the car was working just to go. So not cool. Um, since last video, I did the easy fix, threw on a new right front brake caliper, but test drove it, exact same thing, and actually left front brake I noticed was getting hot as well. Some people may be wondering, why not just delete the ABS? And yes, that is a great option. Actually, in the bay behind me is my VR6 Turbo Corrado. That is non-ABS. It works great for what I use the car for. But there are a few reasons. First off, the factory Mark II brake parts are getting hard to find. There are swap kits available, but they're also quite expensive. And I feel like if it's there from factory, I'd love to see it working. So let's figure this out. I'll be honest, I've never messed with these ABS units before. So we'll be learning together. If there's things I miss or you think I should have looked into, let them know in the comments and I'd love to hear from you guys. Before we dig into the car, I'll show you guys what these ABS units look like just because they are so odd and that way you guys know what I'm talking about. This came out of my friend Trevor's B3 Passat, so super nice to have it, whether we steal some parts off or even swap the whole thing in. So on top, obviously, you got your brake fluid reservoir. This is your line that goes over your clutch master. On the back is where the brake pedal bolts on there. And then this is where it gets weird. So on the bottom, you got the pump, and this is a switch that controls when the pump comes on. Pumps it into the accumulator here, which holds a ton of pressure. That way the pump's not running all the time. And then over here, you got all your solenoids that control uh, the brake fluid going to each brake. I am gonna try and scan this thing with VCDS just to try and narrow down all the suspects in here. If you saw when we were getting this car running, it was full of mice and they just shredded wires. So anything's possible. I'm also curious if it'll let us run the ABS pump on it. So got this adapter on Amazon. It's like six bucks, had good reviews. So we'll see what happens. Your OBD1 port is right by the shifter. Our interior is kind of going right now, but normally you just pop up the cover and this should be fastened right here. So we got VCS plugged in the laptop. You can see we got power from the laptop. Now we're turning the key on on the car. Plug in VCDS and when the last bulb lights up, you know you got power coming from the car. Perfect. Now we'll come in here, hit select. And we're looking for ABS, which is number three here. All right, we got two fault codes. What do you think it is? All right, you can see we got two codes right there. Really interesting, we got two for the right front wheel speed sensor. So I think that's a real easy place to start right there. So very quickly see why we have a problem here. Um, no words, definitely a reason to have an implausible signal. Shout out to Cliff Jumper. He pointed out in one of his videos, these brackets are actually a ground. So important that they are fastened and tight. That looks good, but yeah, definitely need a new harness there. Even crazier, I took a look at this side. Um, where even is the harness? It's totally missing. So that's kind of odd we don't have a code there, but hey, we'll get them both coming. It's been a few days, battery was dead, so that was the end of testing. So getting that charged up. In the meantime, our new ABS sensors came from Amazon. 18 bucks. They claim that it works for a 1991, but not a 1992 Corrado, which is what this is. So we'll find out if they're right. I got the new ABS sensors and harnesses in the car. Not quite direct fitment, but close enough. For less than 20 bucks, I couldn't be more pumped with them. 
Pulled up VCS, started testing everything, and it was no surprise we had much bigger issues going on. So VCS would allow me to scan and clear codes, but that was it. As soon as I tried it powering up or reading any data, it just said error. So started digging in deeper. So above the main fuse panel, um, up by your steering column, there's actually two more fuses and two relays specifically for the ABS system. And found out that the one for the valves is blown. And as soon as I replaced the fuse again, boom, it popped. So realizing we got problems there, not exactly sure what caused that. I know the fluid was really bad in the system from sittings for so long. So thankfully we got the whole new ABS system sitting here. So we're just gonna swap the whole thing in rather than trying to swap parts around or anything. So here's the old one I pulled out. Glad to be replacing it, because you can just see it's all rusty and corroded. This one's in much better condition. A few differences here, um, you can see this bracket that went on the back is different, because this actually came out of an automatic versus the manual one has the whole bracket with the clutch master on it. You got your three bolts right by the brake pedal, by the steering column. The top one's a little bit annoying, so I just popped both pedals off and soaked them overnight because they were really rusty, but they came out then. Um, you can see I just painted up the brackets because they were just real rusty and we'll get it back in there. Um, something else to note, I did replace the line on here because the old one, um, their plastic is rock hard and swollen. And when I had done the master a few months ago, it's just been damp around there all the time. So I replaced it with a quarter inch fuel line. That is not recommended because it's not gonna hold up the brake fluid. I do have the correct one ordered and coming, but at least for now, that'll get us by. ABS unit is in the car. Turn the key on and it didn't immediately pop the fuse. And for the first time since I've owned the car, I got to hear the ABS pump running. So massive win there. Then I hooked up VCS to the car. I wanted to see if my new ABS sensors are reading properly and test for codes. It will not connect with the car at all. Then my wife came out to help me bleed all the brakes and I also need to bleed the clutch. And that's when disaster struck. Oh my goodness. As soon as she pushed the brake pedal, it immediately blew out the rear brake line. Kind of frustrating, but also a good thing at the same time, because ever since I've owned the car, I've never been able to get brake pressure for the rear brake. So now I know we definitely have rear pressure and most of the lines don't look too bad. Um, just this one here, it sits on top of the exhaust shield and it just gets all kinds of dirt and crap built up there and never gets washed off. So totally rusted through. I actually broke clean off when I was pulling it out. So got a new line bent up, uh, got it close. You got to kind of finagle it in there. So once it's in place, I'll finish tweaking it. And yeah, then we'll try again to bleed the brakes and hopefully drive this thing today. I was gonna take it for a test drive, but Selena really wanted to drive around the parking lot first, so she'll get the inaugural drive. We've had some cars die in this parking lot, so I think she's scared to rip on it. <laughs> Feels great to be back behind the wheel again. I've used the brakes a little bit and coasted and rubbish there. I've used the brakes and it's still coast after I use the brakes so great sign. 
Um, I did forget VCS at the shop, so I'm not able to test everything, but I'm very confident that we have it figured out. Test drive went absolutely great until it didn't. Car felt absolutely amazing. For the first time driving this car since I've owned it, the front calipers weren't just locking up. The ABS worked perfectly. Super pumped. The car felt like it had way more horsepower because of the brakes not being on all the time until I started smelling brakes again, which has been a really familiar smell with this car. So quite annoying, but it's good to know we are making headway. Back to square one when I started on this build, um, I thought the calipers were bad, and now we officially do have a bad brake caliper. So pulled it back in here, opened up the brake bleeder to let the pressure out, and it still was dragging. So not bad, just dragging just enough that they've got hot over time. So found out these brake calipers are extinct. Um, if you guys know of somewhere you can get them, put it in the comments because that'd be great to know. But I looked everywhere. Rock Auto says they have them, but you put it in your car and then they say they don't. Um, same thing with AutoZone and some other stores. All of a sudden when you try and buy it, then they say they don't have it. So really frustrating, but there are rebuild kits like $7 from Napa. Rebuilt this thing. I've never done that before, but we're going to stick it back on and hopefully we're all good now. One trick to not have the brake fluid just dripping all the time and you know, just running out because I've already gone through a bunch of it on this car. Just have the brake pedal held in and it doesn't drip at all. Pretty cool trick. Unfortunately, it is dark outside now and the headlights on this car don't work. So I'm gonna try drive to work tomorrow. So that'll be the official first test. We'll see how it goes. On. Off. Beautiful. Well, good morning. Good to be back in the Corrado. Things so much fun to drive. Really hope it's all good. <laughs> There's just nothing else that sounds like a VR. It's so good. Love this car. Alrighty, guys. Put a couple miles on the car. Both front wheels are totally cold, so no brakes dragging. So happy with that, man. This thing's so cool. Super excited to finally have the Corrado on the road. I drove it to work several times this week. Puts a smile on my face every time, so really exciting. A few things I do want to mention for those of you at home trying to figure out your ABS systems. Um, something I didn't mention, I don't think, is the ABS light on the dash. So that's a good indicator of what's going on. When I started this project, the light never came on. Um, once I figured out that the fuse was blown for the ABS and replaced that, then the light was stuck on all the time. Once I fixed all the issues, cleared the codes, now the light is staying off. So you can kind of gauge what's going on there. Another thing I don't think I talked about is the ABS control module, which is right down here by the grab handle for the hood. Um, that is a very common issue. They get moisture and the pins corrode. I think they're like 45, 50 bucks. So if you're having issues, that's worth just replacing because they commonly go bad. Um, I do need to mention, um, while it is working okay, we're still not communicating right with the car. ECS is allowing me to check and clear codes, um, but that's it. I can't see anything else. So whether that's a mouse chewed wire like we've messed with before or that control module that's bad, at some point later, I might just put a module in, but it's working, so I'm not too worried about it at the moment. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hit the thumbs up button if you guys enjoyed this process. Um, got a lot more in depth than I ever was planning on, but I'm glad it's working, and I hope you guys find this helpful. 
We'll see you guys real soon at the Tri-State Karate Cruise.